Hi guys, back again. So today I'm going to be uh, using a, a rather worn PAT flap wheel here on a, an angle grinder to uh, take this paint back down to the metal. It's not a particularly aggressive disc, but I do need to be careful not to go too far into the metal. Um, I'll be taking this back to bare metal on the top section. I'm going to leave the sides alone. I'll then use a denibbing pad, just a Scotch Bright pad to round the edges off um, and then we'll be good for uh, for primer of course uh, there's going to be uh, several coats of primer several coats of top coat and that'll all be uh, sprayed uh, in in a spray booth I do that inside um, but uh, using uh, an extractor to get rid of the fumes now so I would often sand things in an extractor but with this I'm not going to I'm going to take this outside so I'm using the cordless today um, because this is believe a 1960s unit and um, this could be lead paint who knows I'm not prepared to take that chance so I'll be uh, doing it outside and with a significant uh, dust mask as well uh, for safety and I'm going to leave the original sticker on and when I'm spraying I'll uh, uh, I may take a rush of blood to the head and remove that for completeness to try and get another one of these aftermarket um, but uh, I'm going to as I say treat the whole of the top face uh, ready to refit to get rid of these horrendous brush marks and all the old gunk that's been splattered on and has just uh, just uh, accumulated over the years. So there you go, let's take it outside and get sanding. Okay, perfect. That's all the uh, that's all the rust taken back. Nice smooth surface. Perfectly okay to use the original paint as a key for the body primer. The body shot primer will pull all of that back together anyway, and I haven't needed to go over the edges. So those corners, the profile on them, uh, the little radius on the edge, is unaffected. Nice one. Okay, job done. So uh, next uh, is the. Uh, a bit of a wipe down with some uh, some alcohol cleaning solution basically just to uh, get rid of any grease and then on with the body shot primer executive decision I am going to take this label off let's see if I can find another one online if I can't I'll uh, print one and attach that but uh, that is going to be a real pain when I'm dealing with the uh, respray No filling required. It's nice and smooth. There's a key on the whole surface now, um, ready to receive the primer. Back's unaffected. Oh, one other very important thing to do, I need to go and wash my hands because as I say this could be lead paint. So uh, before I do anything else I'm going to go and do that uh, and then we'll give this a wipe down uh, with some meths, maybe white spirit depends what I've got easily accessible on the shelf um, and uh, get on with the primer. So 
Turns out I don't have either white spirit or maths, but I have got brick cleaner. Let's give this a crack. anti-rust primer. Um, a little bit of overkill because I'm intending to use this uh, Hammerite Smooth uh, direct to rust metal paint um, but we'll give it the best possible chance of not rusting in future so uh, clean it down, got rid of the rust, back to the metal, key on the surface all round, primer going on, uh, a couple of coats of that um, I shall be using a denipping pad between coats just to take down any high spots uh, and then on with the uh, smooth metal paint. Okay, so that first coat is now completely dried. You can see when you look up close that it's uh, not fully covered the uh, the original paint. So I'm just going to go around that now with the, the second coat, possibly even a third, before I start to uh, denib that and make sure that it's nice and smooth, ready to receive the top coat. Once again, always check it. with the next one. As before, it doesn't matter if we don't completely cover all of it. If there's a stripe left, the next coat will take it. What's important is that this doesn't go on blobby or run. Now there is one piece here that needs a little bit of attention, so I'll uh, tidy that up in a second once this is all dried down. Uh, also that little uh, lump there, I'm not going to try and pick it off now, I'll deal with that in a second once it's all dried out. The key with this kind of stuff is take your time and be patient. Thin layers, take your time and always remember to clean out the nozzle. Turn it upside down, spread it as yet runs clean. Okay, so this little imperfection here, just this section. I'm just going to tickle that again with the angle grinder and uh, really don't worry about having to reprime at this point. That's what the primer is for, is to tie everything together, give it a good key for the uh, top coat to go on. So I'm going to uh, tidy this up now. Again, by the way, that was actually a surface imperfection in the original paint. So, if it is lead paint, once again, that's the toxic dust being released there. And we've got this little lump that was again just a surface defect on the side. So, I'll just uh, tie all that together again with the denibbing pad. No high spots or low spots does mean that on this side I'm going to have to prime it again. Well, that's no big deal. That's what the primer is for, as I say, is to tie everything together to make it nice and smooth.
Okay, perfect. Let's give that another little tickle with the primer and we'll see how that looks when the next layer is dry. Again, remember I've gone right the way back to metal, so it's going to take two, maybe three coats before this is ready. Take your time, be patient. Always clean the metal. on this time. Okay, so there's now uh, uh, at least three in some places, four and five very, very thin layers been applied. I'm going to leave that for a couple of hours now before denibbing it. Um, once I've denibbed it, and that's basically when you take any tiny little um, imperfections off the surface to leave a lovely silky feeling uh, surface, I will clean it once again um, with uh, a solvent, whatever that may be. Brake cleaner worked well before, but it might be a bit too aggressive for fresh primer. So possibly uh, meths, uh, possibly white spirit, but I really need to let it uh, properly cure uh, before being aggressive with it. Now, the primer itself recommends leaving it at least 24 hours. I don't have 24 hours to leave it, but I will be gentle. Uh, and also that's if you're putting it onto uh, a car where the surface imperfections would be really tremendously obvious. Um, so uh, we uh, very very gentle with uh, with the denibbing. We'll put another couple of coats on after that. That'd be a good solid um, and complete uh, layer of primer, uh, and then we start mist coating the uh, the metal paint. So uh, I'm going to leave that now for a couple of hours. I'm going to leave that video there, um, and I will um, pick up the, uh, the the top coat uh, in the next video. But, uh, all I have to do here before we're ready to do that is go over it with a very fine um, sponge sanding block. Really, really fine. Might even use thousand grade um, wire wall uh, and then clean any dust off. There you go, so part two complete. It's starting to look really, uh, really quite nice. Um, and it will really come to life next with the, uh, the blue paint going on in the next video. So keep an eye out for that one. I'll see you next time.